Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 35. Hopefully, everyone is having a great day. Uh, good day here. Um, pretty busy. Things are starting to pick up, which is great. Um, finally went and uh, upon my granddaughter. My five-month-old granddaughter's orders uh, finally went and go, finally went to go get a cut. Oh my God! <laughs> so, so this is the deal, right? So, I'm here in North Carolina, tiny little town. Okay, but we do have a Dominican salon. Now, I've been to a bunch of barbers around here, and there's somebody that always screws up, man. It was, so, one thing I miss about the Bronx, you know, I had my. I had my man that was there, and I mean, forget it. His precision was like impeccable. Come over here, man, and I'm old, no matter what, I got, it gets to a point where I just like, I expect something to go wrong. I look in the mirror, it looks fine. I try to study it, but for some reason, the minute I get home, something's crooked. Whether it's I'm staring at my hair, then it's my beard. You know, I look in the back, I see the, the, the line around my ear. It's always something. I haven't gotten to a point where anyone has pointed it out themselves and said, oh, yeah, it looks good, your hair. Oh, oh no, no, no. They all pointed out themselves and say, yo, man, what's up with your hair? <laughs> so um, even my wife, my wife, I ask, I'm like, you know, how my hair looks. You know, she always says, oh, it looks good, it looks good. Like, for some reason, she doesn't see the flaws, man. I kind of see it. I could be just picky, but... Um, New York, of course, you guys, anybody who's getting a haircut, gets a haircut in New York, knows the deal. We don't really have those issues. Once you find your barber, that's it. Um, but I went through several people, man. It's just um, one of the first guys that I came, I started to go through here. He was good, except he doesn't use a blade, you know. And I was a little, little kind of a little funny about that. You know, I'm used to, you know, when you finish cutting my hair, you're going to, you know, get some cream, shaving cream, and, and get a straight razor to my neck and and my hairline and kind of really clean it up. This dude wasn't doing that, you know? Another thing that I noticed, this is the first dude that I went to. Another thing that I noticed is that he doesn't like to touch my head or touch, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I mean, honestly, man, what, you know, a dude who ain't, Nobody likes their f anybody's fingers in their freaking face, but you know, when you got your barber, you know, if your barber ain't holding your face a certain way and like freaking his pinky fingers like almost in your mouth and his thumb is up your nose and he's kind of twisting you, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's something wrong. They're not cutting right, you know? So when a dude has his hands like behind his back and the other one, he's trying just to kind of like cut my hair without holding my head, mm. I don't know, man. It doesn't feel right to me. So, so of course, you know, it, that always turned out to be, you know, s something wrong, something flawed uh, on my hair. Now, I do a regular, you know, skin fade high, keep the top a little bit, you know, and that's pretty much it. But, um, and then I had another dude that I found. My son turned me on to him, and I turned my nephew Eddie on to him. Um, and he was cool in the beginning. And let me tell you something. I pay good and I tip good. Um, and I didn't understand, man, but this dude was taking appointments. He was telling me, be there. You know, I opened up at 8. So I was there at 7.50. So I'm there before anybody. I'm talking about there's nobody in the parking lot. When this dude pulls up and he gets out of his Jeep, I was getting out of my Jeep. And, and I was heading to the, to the barbershop with him. He'll go in there. You know, I'll sit down. And he'll start getting his area prep. Next thing you know, 
somebody's walking through the door. He's like, yo, La, um, I'm gonna take care of my man. He had called last night. I was like, I did that a couple of times. After that, I, was, I went to, I sent him to hell. He saw me out once. I goes, yo, man, you know what I mean that? You know, it was, it was, it was real. You know, I had someone, I'm like, nah, man. Nah, you, you tell me to come here at 750, I'm the first one here. I don't care. I said, if you're telling me all I had to do was make a phone call, I would have called you. I would have called you freaking the night before and, and, and be there, on, you know, when you need me there. That's not how we did it. So, you know, I mean, I, I take shit real personal like that. You know, I don't like to wait. I'm not big on lines. When it comes to the supermarket, I'm usually staying in the car. When it comes to post office or um, uh, any of those, any of those, uh, I just, I can't do it, man. I can't. I really, that shit drives me crazy. But, um... So I wind up, you know, dumping him. Then uh, my wife was getting her hair done at a salon, right? Not far from the house, Dominican place for a show. And she calls me up and she goes, hey, she goes, you need to come over here and check out, um, check out the barbershop over here. Check out the dude over here, man. It's, like it's, it's empty. It's just me in the chair. His wife is cutting my hair, and he does a nice job. I, she, she's telling me she just saw him. Excuse me. Drinking some more nasty ass tea. Yuck. Mm, I ain't feeling that one. Um, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what the name of it is, but I call it nasty tea, you know. So, um, but anyway, um, so she tells me, Tells me one time to go over. I was like, ah, you know, I wind up going to back to the other dude, the first dude. Maybe a month comes by. She calls me again from the barber shop, from the salon. She says, you need to come over here. She goes, you need to come check this place out. She goes, I just saw him cut some hair. This dude's really good. So I said, you know what? All right. You know what? I jumped in my car. I went over there. And... Dominican dude and his wife was doing her hair and they were doing a great job and then I sat down dude didn't speak no English and my, my Spanish sucks like I can understand what he was saying but he couldn't understand anything I was saying so um he understood you know sign language with my hair so I got the hair the way I wanted I was happy man I, I kind of I was digging it you know so that became my new spot the only thing he charged a little bit extra but it was cool it actually all came out to about the same because with the tip and everything. So if anything, the other people made more money because I pretty much paid the same. Um, so, you know, I would go there on a regular basis. And uh, what happened was I started noticing something I didn't dig too much. You know, it's like, okay, you got people sitting here waiting and you're going to go eat lunch. I don't know. I, have, I, know, I know people got to eat, but I have an issue with that, man. I mean... You know, you need to find, either tell people to come back at a certain time or put a sign up says, you know, I don't know. You got to figure something out. Don't eat, man. <laughs> don't eat. Eat early and then eat again in the evening. But um, I can't, I can't sit there. I'm already frustrated. I got to sit there. But to sit there and, and while you sit at the table at, in clear sight. Um, and eat your sandwich or whatever the hell you're eating. Um, it was it was annoying me. So I was starting to get a lot of that where the dude would come in late. I'm sitting there, he would come in late, and he would just kind of like get on the phone. He'll start changing the channels on the TV. He'll sweep. He'll, you know, make his coffee. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Come on. I, I just, I was having such a hard time, you know, uh, with that. So and then I noticed that he's the owner of the place. He started getting other people coming to fill in the chair, some other barbers. And he, he sent me to a couple other people. Um, I wasn't too crazy about that. Like, nobody's ever done that before. Like, when I go to a barber, the barber services me. I never have to, I've never seen a barber send me somewhere else. But kind of made sense. I, I This dude, I think, was just straight up lazy. I started to, to realize this later on. He was taking, like, massive vacations, going to DR, you know, two, three times a year. And, and so you can't really commit to him. Like, that can't be your barber. You got to be like open because if you go there and you want to cut, you better be ready to go on with anybody. So you need to know who, who the next best person is because they have like women coming in that, you know, and they have some dudes that you could tell that these dudes were real new because they were freaking 
nervous cut it. I was like, oh no. And I've literally seen a couple of them really mess up some hair. And I was like, oh man, I, you know, not for a show. Now, if you cut mess up my hair, I'm never gonna go back. But you know, I'll be pissed. I ain't gonna sue you. No, my hair's gonna grow back, but I ain't gonna fight you either on it. But I'm gonna go home and wear a hat and wait till it grows back out, and then I'll go and get it corrected, man. But if I'm going to a show, I gotta be real careful. I can't have, you know, someone mess up my hair before a show, because I'm gonna look like a fool and I gotta travel and go through airports and hotels and venues and I just don't wanna go through that. But anyway, so another time I went over there and the Dominican dude was servicing me and I was sitting there and I'm watching, they had this white kid that came in and he was new and he started cutting hair next to them. And I'm watching this kid. This kid was in his 20s, man, straight up white hair. And he's dope, man. Like, I'm watching him. Like, he's got this shit. Like, he's better than the freaking owner of the place. So I'm saying to myself, damn, you know, I, I, I kind of like how this dude talks. You know, how, I mean, how he cuts. So we started to talk. You know, he just he was a real friendly dude. And we just started going back and forth and back and forth. And we just talked about all kinds of stuff and, and kind of got to know each other, right? So next time I had a show, I went over there, and the Dominican dude wasn't there, only the white kid. So he says, yo, he goes, you know, Kino is in here, man. I'm like, yo, that's cool. Can you take care of me? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. If you want, you want. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> so I sat in his chair, and we kind of got to know each other. Now, this is what's so crazy. This is bugged out, all right? I have this in my Freestyle Promotions book. So if you got that book, I actually tell this story because it's, it's pretty interesting. So I'm sitting there. Now, mind you, this dude's younger than my son. Okay, my son. All right, anyway, let me, let me go on to this. So anyway, he's, he's cutting my hair. We're kind of getting to know each other. I found out he was in the Marines and this and that. And then, of course, the old... So what do you do, man? You know, that's what they, you know, they want to know what I'm doing for a living. I don't... You know, I don't really uh, um, advertise it, but I don't hide it either. I think that's rude also. Um, and people are usually fascinated. It's just, um, it's a little on the selfish side. Sometimes it's just a little tiring trying to explain exactly what we do. It's not like I'm an artist. I'm an, I'm an agent and people kind of, they don't understand. So I kind of, I break it down. So I have my little routine of how I break it down. So anyway, so the dude asked me, I said, well, I said, I'm a booking agent. I said, I book tours, I book artists on tours around the country. Been doing it for about 30 years. He was, oh man, get out of here, that's dope, that's dope. You know, that's how this kid talks, that's dope. I said, yeah, yeah, he goes, he goes, you know, any artists I might know? So right away, I'm saying to myself, I'm, I'm saying to him, I'm like, not really, man, not really. Um, I do a kind of music called freestyle. He's like, freestyle? Like, he stops and he looks at me. Now, right away, I'm thinking, oh, okay, he thinks I'm talking freestyle rap because you can tell white kid that likes hip hop you know so so um my dog's tripping over here <laughs> so anyway so he um so he's a freestyle I'm like yeah yeah he goes he goes like who like who I'm like ah oh, man he goes so I'm like well I said it's, it's a it's a it's a Latin dance type of music you know uh they called it Latin. He goes, no, no, I know, man. I'm like, so I'm testing this dude. I'm like, you, what do you mean, you know? He goes, yeah, yeah. He goes, this, this is how weird this shit is. Man, you mean like little Susie? I'm like, blew my mind. Boom. I'm like, huh? He said, yeah, yeah. Take me. Take. He starts to sing. I'm like, this is no way. No way. Listen, my son is, my son's been around this shit his whole life. He don't even know the words to take me in your arms, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, what? So I'm like, this is this, I'm trying to think. There's no way in the world, because I didn't introduce myself the first time we met. We're really getting to know each other right there on the chair. So I'm like, well, yeah. He goes, yeah, man, I've been in love with Susie, man, for years. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm her manager. He goes, get the fuck out of here. Yo, he like drops, kicks back. He goes, Oh man, I gotta meet her. So he loses his mind. I'm like, I'm like, so I'm still baffled. I'm like, wait a minute, man. I said, 
We're in Monroe, North Carolina. You're young and you're a white dude. How the hell do you even know this shit? Like, how, what, where is this coming from? So he starts to tell me. He's from New York. And his mother was a fan. So he grew up listening to the music. And he ended up in liking the music. And I guess he had, his mom had passed already. But he had conversations with her about it. So he was familiar with like all the acts. He knew Stevie B, he knew Johnny O. And then I bring up the cover girls. So he goes, yes, I know the cover girls. And he starts to sing, show me. At that very moment, Angel comes in, okay? She wasn't getting her hair done that day. She was next door getting her nails done. She walks in, the dude at that minute turns around to greet whoever it is, and he goes, oh, shit, that's Angel from the cover girls. I'm like, no way. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> no, this, it was like it was set up. Like, now, if my nephew was close by, I would have, you know, I would have said, ah, oh, my nephew set this shit up. Or like uh, DJ LeBron, who lives out here also, if I, I knew them, I knew the barber before I knew LeBron, but had it been the other way around, I know LeBron would have already told him. He would have put him up on it. So it was the weirdest thing, man. So this dude knew everybody. <laughs> so, you know, so of course, you know, Andrew came over and they started talking. He's very talkative, real friendly dude, but it was just so crazy, man, that this is why, man, we can't underestimate where we're at. We can't underestimate this genre for nothing. I don't think anybody has ever experienced what I experienced. Now, if you were in my town, now if you're in New York, that's pretty typical. Maybe Florida, California. Honestly, not here. Not here. This is like borderline farmland. I live in a city area, like not city, it's more like a suburb. Like this is like the Long Island of Charlotte. So it's a nice area, but you know, you need to be able to drive. There's no mass tra uh, transit out here, nothing like that. So subdivisions, homes, lots of land. Um, there used to be a lot of farms and certain times of season, uh, you see some of this land will grow corn. So it's pretty country, it's, it's country, you know? Um, so it, it was the last thing, man, I ever imagined, you know? So. But anyway, so he ended up being my barber man for quite a few years, quite a few years. And um, so this morning I got up and I was so like not in, not used to going again. I had, yo, straight up, three months, three months. Can you imagine what my hair looked like? Like I got a picture. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm so tempted to post it, man. But I'm not. <laughs> so the beard man was like, and I got a new machine. I could have trimmed it. It's like, I didn't want to do any of that, man. I just kind of wanted to, but then it started to bother me. You know, and then when little Gia, man, freaking caught a fit, man, and cried, and she loves me, she always wants to be around me, and she cried, I was like, oh, no. I said, I got to go. So when I went over there, I said, let me go early in the morning, because they got this girl that cuts, right? Girl speaks no English. She usually goes there because she's, like, new. However, she cuts hair pretty good. So she's done my hair before. I saw her cut somebody else's hair. And one time I went there early because I had to I had to do something. And I could have taken the risk. Like if she didn't cut it perfect, it's fine. I would have popped the hat out. I just had to drive somewhere. And um, she actually did a really good job. I mean, we looked at it. My wife looked at it. She's like, yo, that girl did that? I said, yeah. So she was kind of dope. So I got up early this morning. I said, you know what? As soon as the barbershop opens, I'm going to go over there. Maybe I'll see the girl. I let her cut my hair. I won't be that embarrassed. Cause I'm gonna walk in there looking like a wolf. Now you you know you're doing a, a barber shop that's pretty much you no know, hood. You got you got everybody in there. Everybody walking. People walking in there with dope fades. You know what I mean? I'm coming in there looking like a freaking werewolf, man. No no joke. So but anyway, I get in there, and it's Scotty, man. It's my barber. I haven't seen him. And like yo, Susie looked at me. Go yo, what the hell? What the hell happened to you, man? Damn, 
He go, where you come out of the woods? Yo, he just, it was, he was full of snaps <laughs> from that point on. But anyway, so, you know, I got in his chair, man. He hooked me up, man. So it, it was, it was weird. It took a lot of cutting, man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, you know, back down to normal. Uh, I got to do some vlogs too. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to look like that in the vlogs. Because one vlog, I got a nice dope tight fade. Next one, I look like a wall werewolf. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Especially people don't don't know me. They kind of throw them off. They're gonna see uh, then they're gonna see the thumbnails. Thumbnails have the short hair, and then all of a sudden you see the video, and it's me with this freaking, this this craziness going on. So, but anyway, so that's what pretty much happened today. You know, uh, other than that, just working, uh, getting everything uh, together. I just got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I have uh, yes, yes, y'all. My books. I have three books. Uh, coming out uh, to be released March 27th. So I've been editing that. I have to kind of pick up the pace uh, because I have the rest of this month and most of March, you know, but you know, you really, really got to wrap your head around it if you're going to write or if you, well, I'm, it's written, but I have to edit. So I have to really, you know, I got to get my head in the game with that. So I did some, I went in there, did some uh, touch ups and, but I have to go through with the intentions of finishing up, you know, so um, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be available March 27th for order, for order. So, uh, as paperback right now, you can do a pre-sale for the Kindle version. Um, but the paperback will be available March 27th. I do, um, encourage you guys to pick up a copy of that. If you didn't get any of my other books, you know, yes, yes, y'all. I mean, Freestyle for Life, Freestyle and the Seven Simple Steps to Freestyle Promotions. They're all available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Pretty much any on online book retailer, you can get my books. Um, they'll they'll get it right out to you. You might find yes yes show in a couple of the smaller bookstores, uh, but not many. Uh, that's like they really don't pick up they don't pick up books like that like they used to. So no, but not too many people are even you know buying books that way anymore now. Everything's online. I know I buy all my books online. So, but anyway. Um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Hope everything was good. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please um, don't forget to like and share this podcast from whatever platform you're on. Also, if you're on YouTube and you're listening, please subscribe to the channel. It's very important that you subscribe. Um, it helps me out a lot. Um and um, comments always great. Uh, Facebook's uh, Good Night Freestyle on Facebook. That's a good one there. You can find this podcast uh, usually within 24 hours on that page. So 24 hours after you hear the, the podcast, it's recorded at night. The following day, around the same time, it's uh, it's loaded to um, to the Facebook page, and that's a great place to leave comments. Or if you have any questions, like I said, I'm willing. I got a lot of you guys uh, DMing me. That's cool. I mean, I know some of the questions are a little on the private side. Um, I understand. I know where you're going with that. That's cool. But um, if you have any other questions uh, that can be posted on the page. That'd be real cool because then other people can read it. And that way when I answer it, other people get that information. Because I do, yeah, sometimes I'll get two, three people to ask me the same exact question. So if I can say it once, well, not not that I, I, it annoys me of answering over and over again. But there might be others who are a little embarrassed or shy to um, to contact me and ask any questions, you know. Sometimes people think or they, they, they want to pretend as though they know everything and they don't. And when it comes to this business, it's a good idea not to pretend to know everything. Uh, there's a lot of shit that I don't know. And there's always new things uh, coming up, new laws and so on. So it's good to um, to ask questions if you can. Um, uh, if you have it in you, um, you know, ask the questions. So, Okay, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. And until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.